Hi there, Robin here, and in this video, we're going to be talking about this speaker right here, which is from Alto. It is their TS315. This is one of their most exciting speakers out there. It's their 15-inch, peaked at 2,000 watts, but it also breaks down to 1,000 watts with 650 on the actual driver and 350 on the actual tweeter horn. So today, right now, you are listening to it through a Marantz microphone set up right in front of the camera. This way, you get to see and hear the actual live sound off of the speaker. I do have it hooked up to a mixing board, and of course I have a microphone located right in front of me. So in today's video, we're gonna cover all the features and benefits of actually buying a TS315. So stay tuned, we're gonna take a close look at the back, follow it up with all the overall features. And here we are having a look at the back of the Alto Professional TS315. Yes, it is a 2000 watt peak power, that's a thousand watts. RMS. It is divided between, like I said earlier, the driver, which carries 650 watts for the 15 inch. And then there's another 350 watts going straight up to the horn. That would make it a bi-amp system, which is really nice to see. And that's how we're going to see a lot of these brands today. A bi-amp system, which allows them to control the crossover point and a lot of other features built inside the unit. It is also a D-class power amp. That is like saying this speaker runs off a of diesel instead of regular gas. The number may sound the same as a lot of other consumer brands, but because it's D-Class power amp, it's much more efficient, much better at delivering the power, and it's much more responsive. That's what's happening when you buy an actual TS315. Now for the actual controls, they don't load it up with a ton of bells and whistles, and this is to allow them to give you performance, quality, and reliability without a whole bunch of bells and whistles to drive up the price. What do you get in here? You're going to get two line inputs, which can be either be line or mic. There's a located at the top. You're going to have a volume gain control that allows you to transition from a line input into a mic input. So that's going to adjust not just the preamp levels, but the actual impedance as well, allowing you to plug a microphone in and get good quality response out of it. Normally you'd run it at 12 o'clock, zero dB, but you can increase it to about to a clock, which is going to give you an extra 50% of line input. Remember, as you turn these knobs, it basically doubles the actual volume output all the way up till it matches full tilt unity at top. And if, again, you have lower input levels, you can compensate by bringing the volume up a little bit. So to line up with the actual volume controls on top, you get two inputs at the bottom, which are combo jacks, which allow you to run either a TS, an unbalanced connection, or a TRS balance connection through the quarter inch input. It also has a three pin configuration, which is how we have this one plugged in. So if we turn the volume down here, we can easily unplug the XLR cable, take those three pins, line them up and bring it right back in. The last jack is actually a mixed output, it takes these two signals, mixes it and brings it back out of here. This allows me to plug directly into another speaker or maybe drop down to a subwoofer if that's what I choose. On top, we get two buttons. The ground is for older audio equipment or, you know, audio equipment that wasn't created with a common or neutral ground taken into mind. This allows you to change the way the grounding is on the actual unit. This is going to be more based on what you have plugged into it. And a lot of people do ask me, when, do, when should I turn that on? How do I know I need to use it or not? You'll know. You'll plug something into it and all of a sudden the speaker will start to hum and buzz and you're going to go, wow, there's something wrong there. It's not what it normally sounds like. You hit that button and if it's a grounding issue, this button will correct that problem for you. Now the top button's a contour button. Contour button basically drops the mid-level of an EQ, brings it down a little bit. It allows you to play this speaker at lower volume levels, but still retain the full sound and depth of the speaker. This is really important again, because it's such a powerful speaker and a 15 inch driver, that to have the contour button really allows you to get the performance and quality out of it without having to turn up the volume all the time. Because sometimes you just want to play it, you don't want to play it loud that contour button is going to cure that problem for you. So let's take a closer look at the box and the actual grill in front of the unit. So this is a closer look at the actual grill. It's a full honeycomb pattern and it's basically screwed on at the bottom and at the top. We do have an indicator light right down at the bottom letting you know the actual speaker is turned on. So if you're missing one, you can spot it. Now, as well as that behind it, Good companies, I mean, other companies are doing it, but good companies will put a diffuser internally right behind the actual screen 
uh, protecting the speakers. Now that diffuser does two things. One, it helps to actually, well, diffuse the sound and it takes the impact off the actual grill. So this way we're not gonna get unwanted sounds or vibrations from the actual steel on the actual speaker grill. So that's a big plus, it's very nice to have there. It also gives us a very matte neutral look to the whole speaker, uh, but it does serve a purpose and that's to diffuse the sound against the actual grill to improve the overall sound quality. So for the handles and the engineering on the speaker, really well thought. I mean, that's the whole point of this particular speaker. A lot of time and energy went into designing a speaker box that they wanted to use, not just on the previous model, which was the 215, but something they can carry forward. To improve the overall sound quality of a speaker, especially when it's made of that new polymer plastic material, uh, they've done two things. One, the actual mixture is designed to mimic more of a wood sound. So this way we're not going to get that uh, thin, hollow, plasticky sound off the box, which is a big, big plus. And again, there's a couple of other companies that have incorporated this technology. It's really important to see a speaker box designed like this today. They also, the handle, is actually engineer molded into the unit. It is screwed on separately from the overall body. But again, very important, the angles, they've increased, they have sloped angles, they have tilted back. They've done all of that to create more reinforcement in the actual speaker. There's really only two ways to make a speaker stronger. You make it out of thicker material, or you figure out a way how to really reinforce it without adding extra weight. And going into the speaker and actually creating these angles gives the speaker that solid sound that we want. Something that's not gonna release a lot of energy through the actual speaker so that we don't get this outside sound off the box. But more importantly, it mimics and it gives us the same response as a wooden box, but saving, oh, I'm gonna say at least 30 pounds when it comes to overall weight. Getting back to the handles, they didn't want to shortchange you. Even though this speaker is reasonably weighted somewhere around 40 pounds, they, they have handles on both sides because you can use it as a monitor on either side. That's why we see the slope and the actual grips off to the side. They put handles on both sides so you can decide to either bank it to the left or bank it to the right, whichever way you want. They've even put a handle not just at the top, but at the bottom as well. Uh, this gives us big advantage putting it on the pole. Uh, you don't have to pick it up with such force. You can easily bring it up from the bottom and drop it down instead of trying to hold it up from the sides and just ease it into place. This definitely makes work a lot better. And with all that being said, you'd think you'd be priming yourself for a big price tag, but no, it's probably one of the most reasonably priced products out there. That's really important because we are gonna add performance, quality, and reliability all to that. And the idea is let's not load it down with a bunch of bells and whistles. Let's get it to perform really well. It is a notch above anybody else in its price category when it comes to power right now. So that's also very important. If you're looking for a speaker that's full of energy, ready to go, and is an FRFR full frequency flat response speaker. So this way that means what you put into it is what you get out of it this guy will do the job. It's all in the programming. They've taken a lot of time to get it balanced and to get the sound really good out of it. If you're looking for a speaker to operate at a close range, let's say like eight, 10 feet away, maybe you look at the TS-312, but if you want a speaker so you can entertain people 25 feet, 35 feet plus away, this is a really good way to go. When it comes to bass response, the TS-315 really acts well, again, when you're about you know 12 feet or plus away. If you're gonna be really close to the speaker, again, less than that kind of distance, you might, again, wanna look at the TS-312. It's a speaker that can entertain a group from as small as you know, a dozen to, if you have a couple of them, 150 people. If you want to use it in a band, there's no problem using this in a bar or pub or anywhere in those type of situations. If you're using it as a DJ and it's a wedding DJ application you're thinking about, think 50 people on a dance floor, 150 people in the hall. Put them on stands, keep them up nice and high, you'll be able to have the whole evening covered. If you're looking to have this at home and you just wanna have really great speakers for entertainment, for backyard parties, rec room, that sort of thing, but your plan is to really, I wanna have something with Bluetooth, you have an option. You can get yourself this product right here, which is the Alto Total. It does work on this speaker, of course, and works on all powered speakers that have a three pin XLR. This is an accessory for the speaker, makes it a lot easier if you just want to go Bluetooth. It also offers smart pairing to two speakers. So I can buy two of these, two of these, and have them wirelessly connect to just one phone or tablet. That's the Alto Total. And there we go. That is the Alto Professional TS315. I hope this video helped you in your buying decision today. Maybe we'll see you in the next one. I'd like to say thanks for watching and bye for now.